I, I don't know how to introduce you properly without saying you are just a trailblazer. Um, <laughs> you are, you are a, the author and creator and visionary behind this book, which I'm just going to hold up, The New Black Vanguard. Um, and this book bridges that conversation of fashion and, and art together. And I want to describe you, Antoine, because there are a lot of words that describe you. Um, you are a writer. Right. You right. are a curator. Right. You are a critic. Right. You are a journalist. You are a fashion lover. You are an influencer. And you're based and you're a creative force. But I, I heard you say in some interviews that I've watched that you are just Antoine. So I, can you talk about what that means to you and just what you mean by that? Well, I mean, I can you hear me? Can you yes. Hear me? Okay. Perfect. Thanks for having me and thanks for <laughs> these conversations. I think they're fascinating to kind of um, look at that space in between, um, you know, art and fashion. You know, it's a space that existed, you know, for a very long time, you know, since, you know, at least the turn of the 20th century. Um, in regards to photography. Um, I mean, I, I just think that like, you know, like I think all of those, those labels are, you know, um, uh, approximations, you know, and I think that like, when you are thinking about say a critic or writer or a curator or, you know, a author or whatever, I, I think that all of those histories have to sort of be examined. And so I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't know. I feel like, you know, we're in this age where, um, I'm kind of using a lot of different platforms and I'm kind of, I'm interested in a lot of different platforms, a lot of different institutions, um, rethinking certain institutions, rethinking certain parts of our culture. And so um, I just think that one of those, I'm, I'm kind of fine with writer, but like, you know, like <laughs> that um, there are limitations within each of those things. And I think that it doesn't exactly get to what I um, am trying to do, but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of easy. Sort of <laughs> well, I like what you're saying. There's a limiting factor to labels and sort of allows you to just create however you, you, you deem worthy. Um, I want to talk about your book because mm -hmm. you feature 15 black photographers, fashion photographers, um, all between the ages of 20 and 36. I wanted to talk about how you selected these 15 photographers and if it's coincidental that they're all on the younger side? Well, you know, I don't even, I, you said fashion photographers, and I really think that, you know, uh, the these image makers, you know, they have commercial practices yeah. uh, and they have art practices, but they, or they have something that's kind of in between. And I really... title because you know they're they're sort of grabbing from you know commercial histories but also art histories and also personal histories and cultural histories and social histories to kind of construct images right and so um i don't know if you know i think it i think i think we let ourselves off the hook when we say fashion photographer or we let ourselves off the hook right. when we're trying to sort of categorize um you see, I don't like categories. Yeah, no, <laughs> uh, I think the running theme here. Um, <laughs> I think to work, you know, I think that you know, going back to someone like Man Ray all the way through the 20th century, right? Or you know, James Van Der Zee, for that matter. Um, it's hard to sort of categorize those, you know, those artists, right? Um, and then if you think about someone, you know, um, like you know, Malik Sidibe, um and how there's almost no sort of discussion in the art world around the fact that those are, you know, um, that those images, there's a possibility for those images to operate um, in a fashion context, right? And so I, I think that in wanting to do this book, I wanted to first sort of focus on um, a younger generation of artists, right? Um, artists who were all emerging in their own sort of way um, and who, um, we're kind of working in this sort of common sort of way that really I do think has sort of a generational component to it. I don't think you can kind of divorce, mm -hmm. uh, like I don't think you can divorce, you know, sort of 
the way in which we grew up, so I'm a part of that generation too, so the way in which we grew up consuming images, right, online, on TV, in movies, et cetera, um, in this way that sort of was flattened, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when you come to an image, say, on a site like Tumblr, you don't necessarily always know the source, you don't necessarily always care about the source, right? And so I think that that sort of, the way that we consume images online um, has, you know, kind of re sort of, um, we worked sort of the hierarchy of images, right? Um, that sort of the art world was is kind of obsessed with, right? In terms of like, that's a fashion image, that's a this image, that's a that, you know? And so, and you know, and that, that has to do with value, right? And that has to do with, you know, sort of um, scarcity and sort of the, some of those principles that the art world is sort of built on, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think opera, I don't think artists have, you know, particularly photographers have really ever cared about, you know, um, those distinctions in a real way, um, if you look at the images, because the images are always sort of thinking about a lot of different sort of influences and thinking about a lot of, you know, from the vernacular to landscape to, you know, fashion and what we call art, you know, photography. Do you think then to that point, has the front of a glossy magazine like a Vogue, is that now kind of, does the stature or import of that become diminished because of social media? I mean, is I it still the ultimate or is it not the ultimate anymore? I, I think, I, I, you know, I think that from speaking to sort of photographers and now having become friends with a lot of them, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know if, I think there was, you know, something with Vogue, um, you know, the cover of a magazine has its limitations, right? Mm -hmm. I think that, that, you know, um, that, not that it's, you know, it's always a privilege to put, have a photograph on the cover of Vogue, right? Like, you know, yeah. you can sort of say that's not, but I think that like, because of some of Vogue sort of uh, history of sort of exclusion, right? That a lot of photog a lot of the photographers that, um, that I feature in my book who have gone on to do work for Vogue, yeah. um, a decade ago, their predecessors didn't, could not, right? We're, we're all but locked out of that opportunity, right? Um, not to think about two decades ago, right? So I think that, um, so I think that, you know, this generation probably grew up thinking, um, maybe that's not an opportunity for me because of the way that Vogue had traditionally um, selected photographers, right? Um, which, who were, mostly white, mostly male, right? Yeah. With the exception of Annie Leibovitz. Um, and so I think that like, it wasn't so much Vogue being the, op, um, the, the, you know, sort of ultimate or whatever. I think it was a question of how do you have a career as a black photographer and not have the same opportunities that are available to white photographers, right? Yeah. Um, and been, but then that started to change over the last few years, right? Um, I think part of that change, um, is the fact is the explosion of these young artists i mean you kind of see them everywhere you know online you cannot sort of you know be having is sort of you cannot go online without encountering their images right at this point the way that images are now being sort of disseminated right um but then you also have you know sort of things like you know um them shaping their own audiences right through mm -hmm. their through their sort of online communities through sort of art exhibitions and magazine jobs and stuff like that. And so they have also, I think, which is important, um, was sort of expanded our definition of what images could be and also brought along um, a community around those images, right? And so it was, there were no, so, so which started to kind of, kind of, you know, break down sort of the models around gatekeeperism, right? And break down sort of, who, you know, sort of this idea of an editor or a curator, you know, having a sort of, you know, um, selection or, or whatever, right? And so I think that a lot of sort of things have become destabilized to allow for this moment. I also think that, you know, there's a sh there was a shift in this generation of artists, right? Where um, they're less sort of interested um, in sort of institutional validation in a way that previous generations, you know, sort of, um, mm -hmm ultimate goal was sort of to rush inside the institution, right? The ultimate goal was to be, you know, after being kept out for, after, you know, and this is beyond just photographers, but after black artists were sort of kept out of museums and galleries, you know, um, for decades, um, 
the goal became, you know, sort of, you know, to be inside of those spaces, right? And I don't, and I think that like, you know, this generation is really grappling with the failures of those institutions, right? The failures of MoMA and Vogue and all these other museums that say, um, and, and galleries, frankly, um, that, you know, on the one hand are saying that they're, they're, that they're representative, right? Mm -hmm. of contemporary culture, contemporary art, and then you have all these artists on the outside of that, right? Not because of ability, um, but just because of discriminatory practices, right? And so I think that um, we're really in a moment now, but I think that like over the last several years, we've really started to see this sort of shift, right? Um, in some ways, a shift away from institution, the institution and, you know, being validated by the institution. And so I think a lot of that stuff is, you know, tied up in the book, but also, um, those are just cultural trends, right? And I think yeah. that um, this is one way that it's playing out in photography, right? Um, there are other ways in which that it's also playing out in photography. Um, there are other ways that it's playing out, you know, per, I mean, I think most, you know, sort of pronounced it's playing out in contemporary painting, right? The mm -hmm. ways in which we're kind of thinking about um, um, Black representation in contemporary painting, the ways in which we're valuing that work, all those things sort of are, you know, um, happening in tandem right um there's like 10 different things i want to ask you based on all the media sorry. stuff you just said no you're saying so many interesting things and i think one thing i'd like to go back to though is this idea of you know what is valuable as a young artist and sort of how you're validated and what social media has done in terms of giving opportunities to young artists right. to get have their voice heard can you just opine on if you were a young artist, kind of how you would leverage social media right now? Well, I mean, I think you just have really great examples of, you know, everyone from Chloe Wise to Tyler Mitchell to um, Jordan Castile to, you know, and what, 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 the, what, they're, what those artists are doing or someone like Awal Risku, who was, you know, very early on d using Instagram as this place to stage exhibitions, you know? Um, I think what those artists are doing ultimately um, is allowing people in to see their creative practice, um, uh, showing their audiences, you know, images, you know, sort of um, showing their audiences sort of their subjects, sort of what their interests are, you know, in this really sort of intimate way, right? Like how often, very often, you know, very few people um, in general are allowed into artist studios, you know, um, who have had the, you know, um, consistent sort of uh, pleasure and, and privilege of, of being that close to an artist while they're making, while they're struggling through ideas. Most of the viewing public, you know, see the finished product, right? And I think what social media has helped to do um, is to sort of pull back the curtain, you know, in some ways to show um, possibility, right? Um, and also, I think that, like, you know, motivate more people to be artists, right? I think that we're living in this time where, you know, you, we have more artists than ever, right? We have yeah. more writers than ever, right? Um, and and I think that has to do with the fact that there's a lot more transparency and social media has played a role in um, helping to sort of establish that sort of transparency. Absolutely. I want to quickly just go back to because we've talked. You just mentioned Tyler Mitchell. Um, that is the cover work on your book, The New Black Vanguard. Um, right. Just wh how, why did you select this specific image to represent the contents of the book? Well, I just I thought. I mean, I one this a lot mm -hmm. of what it's about is beauty, and so I just thought that this was a you know a a great sort of uh, symbol of that. Um, it's also about intersection. And so I also thought that that, that was this image is, you know, um, a great symbol of that. It also is about sort of the ways in which the commercial and conceptual are mm -hmm. being through in each of their images, right? Um, this image on the cover um, was for a lipstick ad. <laughs> you know, and like, and you, and if you, and you know, and, 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 and you know, a lot of sort of artists who have, you know, it's like they, they are part of a generation that, you know, 
come after this sort of pictures generations, right? And, and, and sort of sort of those sort of explorations with sort of removing advertisement or playing with advertising on an image. And then you have someone like, you know, Ro, Ro Etheridge, right? Who um, also very, so, someone who is, a, is thinking about the way that one image can circulate or operate in different sort of spaces, right? Um, mm -hmm. I recently had a conversation with him about how th that sort of famous Andrew WK image that he took in 2000, um, you know, was in his show at the Barbican, was also on the his album cover, Andrew <laughs> uh, WK's album cover, but then also was like an advertisement in the street, right? And so, and how those image, that one image could have all of these lives, right? And so I think that like, Although this generation, I feel like that set, that sort of comes naturally to this generation, right? And how the images sort of are meant to, yes, they often, you know, some of them sort of start in a fashion magazine or on, a, on the cover of a mag or fashion um, magazine, but they, you know, they end up in museum exhibitions, they end up in gallery shows, they end up in advertisements, they end up, you know, they kind of have on social media, they kind of have all these lives, right? And in each of those instances, people are bringing their own perspectives or seeing something, you know, something else, right? You know, this one image, you know, um, have those sort of multitudes. And I think that um, for me, that's exciting about the possibility, you know, like, like, like thinking about this image and, you know, and seeing, a, you know, sort of a, you know, a, a, a not religious, you know, religion, but also seeing or not to fashion, but also, mm -hmm. beauty, you know, there are all yeah. of these things, classical, you know, the history of black portraiture is here, you know, sort of all of these sort of, um, there's a paint, you know, there's an odd to painting here, right, and sort of the mm -hmm. positioning yeah. of the image. And so like, there's, there's all of these sort of things that work there in this image that, um, that sort of operates in this sort of between space that, um, that I, just am, that I'm sort of sort of deeply interested in exploring because it's sort of endless. I love it. Um, so can we go back to the 15 photographers in the book? Um, the New Black Vanguard represents a very a specific community that is helping to shape the, that community, you know, mm -hmm. by the images they're putting forth. Um, can you speak to that community, specifically the New Black Vanguard, who is in this community and just in your view, is this idea sort of trailblazing for other vanguards who may be sort of underrepresented groups of people to sort of band to, like, are you? You know, I don't think that these photographers are particularly underrepresented, right? Like, especially okay. in the moment, right? Like, and so I, I think that like, like, and I think, and to me, I think part of it was about sort of trying to be really kind of um, particular and, you know, about the ways in which we sort of think about, you know, the black subject, the black image, right? And I think that like, this is this, you know, the, each photographer, you know, you have photographers from, you know, it's a global sort of phenomenon, right? Like you have a photographer in South Africa, Jamal Naxlana, mm -hmm. you have several photographers in Nigeria, um, London, New York, mm -hmm. uh, Los Angeles, um, and, you know, the Dominican Republic, you know, like you have sort of a sort of global sort of um, uh, fusion sort of of different communities, black communities, not community, communities, um, mm -hmm. that these um, image makers are taking, you know, photographs of, or they're, you know, it, and it's not so, it's not only just about realism, it's also about sort of imagination and fantasy and Afrofuturism and all of these other sort of things that are, you know, happening in those images. You know, you think about, so take Lagos, you know, for example, you have um, Daniel Bossi and you have um, Stephen Tayo, um, both in the book, both who, who are, who live in Lagos, they went to college together, um, who they happen to be friends, um, but shoot, vastly different subjects, right? Um, Stephen was act is actually interested in in sort of this um, sort of sly document, you know, documentarian sort of um, uh, 
you know, photograph, right? He's sort of interested in documentary photograph, right? That genre of phot photography, but they're, they're kind of lightly posed, right? And so he walks sort of through the streets and go, you know, Legos and, and asks you to take photos, you know, of them. Um, and if they're not sort of, if they're, if they're not sort of, want, if they're not sort of wearing the thing that they want to be wearing, he gives them an option to say, you know, I'll meet you at the same time tomorrow, you know, and you can sort of wear what you want, you know, for your photograph, you know, mm -hmm. and so I, you know, like, I think that like, which is, which is to me, sort of a, a critique of sort of street style photography or street photography, right? Um, you know, um, you know, a critique of that sort of gonzo sort of, you know, style, right? Mm -hmm. Allowing someone the agency to, you know, um, be represented how they want to in a photograph, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you, but it also connects to someone like Jamel Shabazz, right? Um, who obviously in the, you know, in the 70s and 80s in New York, in 90, he still shoots, you know, in, in New York, you know, did these, would go around the city, right? Um, during the crack era and, um, and ask people, can I capture your legacy, right? And so there, there's this sort of connection between two photographers who don't know each other, mm -hmm. right? But who are in the streets of, you know, black neighborhoods um, doing, engaging in the same practice, right? And so there are all of these histories sort of at play in the book, right? And so the reason why, and it's a long-winded way to answer <laughs> it, like the reason why I called it a new black vanguard because it implies that there's a history, right? Um, and, the, and, and then honestly, that there's a future. And so I wanted to sort of pay homage to the Jamel Shabazzas, right? Um, the Micheline Thomases, the, you know, um, Roy Day, you know, the, the, the ways that, you know, Tyler's also thinking about sort of Roy Day Caraba um, in the ways that he's thinking about sort of mundane, sort of, you know, black everyday space. You know, I wanted to sort of, you know, think about Gordon Parks, right, who started as a fashion photographer. I wanted to think about, you know, the ways in which, you know, quote unquote, art photographers like Dina Lawson and Carrie Mae Weems are now, you know, have also shot fashion photography, mm -hmm. right? And how, and how those, you know, photographers are, you know, sort of thinking through you know, the fashioning of the black body, right? Because I think that, and then I also wanted to to pay homage to thinkers like Deb Willis Thomas and Thelma Golden and, mm -hmm. you know, others who really sort of laid the sort of foundation for um, thinking about sort of black identity and museums, right? Um, across several generations, right? And so it's, so it's a book about, you know, those, a lot of different communities and a lot of, and, and but it's also, um, a book about what I call the new black vanguard, which is, you know, these, um, this, this particular generation of photographers who are working sort of in between art and fashion, um, and this sort of highly culturally, um, uh, you know, provocative way, um, around the world, right? And so these 15 photographers mm -hmm. are really just the tip of the iceberg, you know? Um, in the exhibition that's currently traveling, it's currently, it started open at Aperture, but it's now, um, at, it's now in Melbourne, Australia. And it's gonna be traveling for a few years. Um, we did a salon style, style hang of 30 additional photographers that fit into this group, you know? Um, I, I really do like to think of it as a movement, you know, I like to think of it as, as, as you know, giving, uh, you know, the sort of uh, very violent history of photography, right? Um, particularly against the, the black body, you have a generation of photographers who are taking back, you know, sort of their image, you know, that image, right, of the black body and rethinking notions of desire and beauty and sexuality um, in the space of a photograph, right? And so um, I always say that they're image makers, you know, because I want to make sure that the, that the distance that that implies between sort of, um, the distance it implies between, you know, uh, I guess the distance and the, the sort of activity that requires in sort of the construction, you know, um, of an image, right? That, that, that this is not sort of by chance, you know? Um, you have, you know, artists making sort of conceptual um, and cultural and social um, demands on the history of photography.
And, and I think that, that for me, um, when Aperture came to me and said, do you want to do a book? Um, I knew that this was the freshest thing happening in photography. Yeah, it's, you've taught, there's so many things, again, you say so much, and there's so much I want to talk about. And you mentioned Thelma Golden, the director and curator <laughs> for the Studio Museum of Harlem, right. whose quote you open your, your book with. Yep. I just want to read it for anyone who has not read your book and should buy your book. There is no question that representation is central to power. The real struggle is over the power to control images. And you have started a movement with this book. We are, I want to get to some other questions because your fashion is something that I want to talk about, especially with my background. Um, you know, you're, I'm, I'm like, I just, I'm loving your hat and I know you're a, you're, you love chapeaus. I would love to know about hats and just what your personal style is. And you have often said that what someone is wearing says a lot about their politics, their point of view. What should we take away from the way you dress? <laughs> um, that's a good, that's a good uh, turn of mine. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think clothing has always, I mean, particularly, like, you know, even, I mean, not to take it back to the book, but, you know, Frederick Douglass is sort of, you know, Deb Willis Thomas has done a lot of work around sort of Frederick Douglass' use of the camera, right? Um, and others as well, Skip Gates and Sarah Lewis and all the, I mean, there's a huge, there's a clearly a whole history there mm -hmm. uh, that could be tapped into. But, you know, there there is this sort of, you know, I, it was just so, dress was just so important to my family growing up um, in Chicago um, and to many sort of Black families um, that I knew that I was inspired by, that I looked up to, you know, sort of. And, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I am sort of obsessed and with, <laughs> with fashion. And, you know, I haven't really been wearing, I've been wearing workout clothes for the last four months. <laughs> so it feels kind of weird to talk, of, talk about. But, yeah, I mean, I think that, like, it really is, you know, about sort of your identity, your interest in aesthetics. You know, I feel like if everyone has to get up in the morning and, you know, sort of negotiate how they're going to look in the world, um, <laughs> it's important to sort of really think about sort of what kind of statement you want to make, you know, because we're all sort of um, sending, sig you know, uh, signals and um, with how we dress, you know, that that's just a part of the sort of cultural uh, dynamic, you know, that we live through. And so I've just been sort of, just super interested in sort of the sort of freedom that um, dress allows me, you know, and I, you know, it's really funny because I, I've been wearing a lot of suits. Oh, I used to in the before uh, <laughs> I was wearing a lot of suits and I became like really obsessed with the like suits, but also like suits they were like really fun. And like, and so, you know, um, one of the last suits that I wore kind of out in the world was this, this Gucci suit, um, that that were it was like it had sort of g's all over it and it's like this tan suit but the the they were the jacket and the pants were slightly discolored and so they did they weren't they matched but they didn't but they weren't the same color and so i don't know i just like to try to have fun with sort of the way that i dress and i also am just like super interested in sort of unique uh things and so um and knowing sort of the the artist and stuff and 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 having sort of what I wear reflect my politics. And so um, one of my favorite designers is Grace Wells Bonner. She's British, um, uh, black British, you know, woman who, who started with menswear and has expanded to women's wear, but also she does these great collaborations with, you know, um, with a lot of artists that I love, you know, um, from Eric Mack to um, Paul Sapoya. She did um, this really beautiful, um, collect this really, really beautiful collaboration um, with what well, I'm now blanking on. This really beautiful collaboration with he did the Great Migration series. I'm like now I'm blanking. Hmm. Um, it will come to me. But he does this really beautiful collaboration with these silk shirts, and that I, you know, just you know, it just really is. She makes really beautiful clothing. Um, and then I, I, I mean, a lot of my friends, you know, from Kirby, who, who does PR Moss, to Christopher John Rogers, you know, um, 
Tal Far, you know, um, Shane Oliver at Hit by Air, Virgil at Off yeah. White, Vuitton. Um, you know, I, I know these guys, you know, we're talking, yeah. we talk, <laughs> we, you know, and it's just, it's really great because it, it, I'm always sort of just in, as I am so endlessly sort of fascinated by art, all, I'm also by fashion. And so it was just really sort of great to be able to get to do a book that sort of considered both, but also considered both in a way that sort of pushed on um, the, the sort of ways, the conventional thinking of each, right? Um, and, and, you know, and it just sort of kind of how I sort of live, you know, and. Is there a signature? I mean, when we see you, will you always be wearing a hat? Is that kind of your signature accessory? I, yeah, you know, I, 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 so I've been wearing this one for quite some, for a little while, Rodney Patterson, it's essential. The company's called Essential, and it's based in New York. Um, he's in the the on the Lower East Side, um, and he's but he's also from Chicago, and so I'm also obviously I'm also from Chicago, um, and so I've been wearing I've been just, I just fell in love with this hat, and uh, and I so I've been wearing it a lot. Before this, I used to wear these really wide brim hats. Yeah, um, but they're really <laughs> difficult to travel with, and so I need like a different. Sort yeah. of, you know, thing. But yeah, I've been really sort of liking hats. Um, I I like to sort of change the look every kind of few years, you know. And I really like to sort of I love a really good silhouette, and so I, I try to sort of think about what that you know could be. But yeah, no, I am. It's like right now, I'm, I'm very much like after sort of this moment hopefully passes. You know, I, I feel like there will be a new need for sort of a new sort of expression of identity through the way that we are dressing and the way that we kind of think about art and the way, you know, and so I just want to, you know, I, I like to kind of have, uh, you know, my clothes kind of reflect the world that we live in. Cause I, I think that it's so important that, um, that, you know, it, it's such as an obvious tool to use um, to kind of express yourself, you know? Um, and I also think it, it allows people to kind of, you know, get a sense of who you are and, you know, and what your values um, are, um, even if you don't know them, even if you don't speak to them, even, if, you know what I mean? And I think that, like, we should all be um, a lot more interested in in making sure that our values and who we are um, are expressed, ex you know, especially, you know, in this moment that we're in. Absolutely. Um, we're running out of time, but I don't want to lose you because you're so interesting. And I just wanted to ask you, because we are talking about designers and brands, mm -hmm. um, you know, you describe in your book sort of a world where we can reimagine our ideals of beauty. Right. And I think one of the simplest ways to do that, or so you, you've mentioned, is really in just considering different model casting. What brands, you know, do you feel are actually doing a good job with this already and maybe just quickly for those brands that are not, what's the easy, what could they do to kind of evolve? So I think somebody who really does a really great job is Christopher John Rogers. He's mm -hmm. in New York. Um, he is, his brand is a couple of years old, but he does a really great job of showing um, not just sort of different body types, but age and you know, gender and, you know, it just really, like, his woman is, you know, he's, is just completely sort of every woman, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it also, it, it, but it's also in a way that doesn't feel, um, you know, like we're being sort of uh, placated, right? Like, it, it feels like in his fantasy, in his clothes, you know, those women, those women are sexy and they, you know, they're seen and they, and that's regardless of age and body type and all of these other things, you know, um, which I think is what makes successful sort of casting, right? Yeah. Um, but also, you know, it, it, I think that we've spent a lot of time on models and I think that's important. I think the work that, you know, uh, Beth Ann Hardison and Naomi Campbell did um, in, you know, uh, 2011, 12, 13, you know, around the model coalition, it's really changed the face of modeling, right? I think that, like, we used to really only see one or two women of color um, on the runways before Beth Ann and, and Naomi Campbell spoke out. And so, you know, we have seen some change, but I also think that, um, 
I'm always like, it's, we can always do more. And I feel like one of the things that we can do is make sure that not only is it on the runway, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also reflected in sort of who's designing the clothes and all of those things, because who's designing the clothes, who's doing the casting, all, you know, kind of the, the back of the house or the in the house jobs, because then I think if you had some sort of, you know, uh, inclusion model, you know, there as well as on, on the runway, then that just automatically you will, you would generate yeah. sort of um, a more sort of um, a runway that is more reflective of the world in which we live in, you know? Um, and so that, you know, so I, you know, I would employ people not just look at the, the runway, but also look at who is designing the shows, casting the shows, doing set design, all of those things sort of matter, I think as well, um, and sort of how um, we think about sort of our standards and who's sort of, um, who is, you know, and who gets to sort of show us representations of those standards, right? Um, one, of the, one of the photographers in the book, Campbell Addy, started uh, mm -hmm. a modeling agency in London to tackle this, you know, problem. And so um, if you, you know, need some sort of advice on that, I would go to Campbell. You know, um, he has a whole agency, he has a whole board, you know, um, with with models ready, you know, that he uses in his art, but he also, you know, um, helped to kind of get jobs across the, in the industry. That's really, really great information. So because we have to wrap up in a little bit, I want to ask you a few more questions. Um, I want to know in your home, what is your favorite piece of art that you own? What's my favorite piece of art? Um, in my bedroom, I have a drawing that, um, a small drawing that Henry Taylor um, did of me. Um, mm -hmm. I was interviewing him a couple of years ago. Um, and so I, I, I really, I, I love Hillary's uh, paintings. And, and so that's, that's one piece that I really, that I love. Um, and then I just bought all of these photographs from these different, uh, uh, social justice print sales. And so um, there are, there's this Still Life by Awal Arisku, um, who's also in the book, who, uh, you know, I, I also picked up. Um, and, you know, I really sort of cherish that. There's a, you know, there's also um, um, Jonathan Gardenhire. Um, he did this sort of this, these images of books um, or that, that kind of speaks to sort of the circulation of knowledge, um, almost in a few Codian sense, really. Um, and, and how that kind of, uh, speaks to power and, and the sort of circulation of power. And so I, I keep that sort of on my desk, you know, as a writer. Um, but I don't actually, you know, it's also funny because I didn't really, I, I, I never sort of started out trying to collect art or anything like that. Um, it's just sort of by working sort of over the last, you know, decade um, with artists that, you know, things are gifted or things or, you know, or, you know, certain things are bought or, you know, or I'll say, oh, that piece is great. But I don't actually, a lot of the art, and this is so kind of weird to admit, but a lot of the mm -hmm. art that I, that I have, I'll have it framed or, or, you know, um, and I, and it basically all just sort of sits along the floor in my bedroom. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it's not really hung in my um, in my house, but have you yourself created anything during the quarantine? Do you ever dabble yourself with any no. kind of artistic project? No, you're just an admirer. I, <laughs> I'm such a like. I feel like we all need to have you know know need to know our roles sort of in in you know sort of, and and mine is to be in service of the artist as a writer and curator and someone that, you know, could be a, signing, a sounding board, you know, like I often, you know, I have these great, di I always call them dialogues, I have these, you know, and sometimes projects come out of those dialogues, but I have these great dialogues with a lot of artists around the world um, that I'm constantly in, com you know, conversation with. I'm constantly, you know, sort of, um, you know, speaking to about shows, or I'm constantly sort of speaking to about, uh, and shows I don't have anything inv involvement in, right? right. And so it's not, it's not sort of, my thing, but I, I just love to sort of be in conversation with artists and grapple with ideas. And sometimes that end up in, you know, uh, writing, you know, uh, books or articles, or it ends up, you know, um, physical sort of, you know, um, 
physical sort of organizing of exhibitions. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I, I have, I've this quarantine, I've taken a much needed break. Um, and then um, more recently, I have a show that I'm planning that's going to go up at Project Plus Gallery in St. Louis um, called Just Pictures. It's a mm -hmm. photography show um, that really sort of, again, explores this idea of between the commercial and conceptual. Mm -hmm. um, and it's young photographers, um, eight young photographers um, from around the world. Um, and so I've been focusing on that. And then there are also, you know, um, just other sort of writing projects too. I know you scooped me on my final question, which is what's next for Antoine? So it sounds like we have well, a really interesting- Lee is <laughs> a show in St. Louis um, called Just Pictures. It opens September 10th, um, is at Project Plus Gallery. Um, and I think it's gonna be, you know, really special. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I've been working with um, the artists and talking to them about their ideas and, and um, we're just about to start um, to uh, produce the, you know, prints and stuff like that and, you know, and then install and all of that. But yeah, that, that opens September 10th. Wow. Well, this has been, I honestly only got to a quarter of the questions. You're so <laughs> fascinating. Um, I could talk to you for hours and I just want to, everyone at Art News, again, this is, Antoine Sargent's beautiful book, The New Black Vanguard. Um, thank you so much for joining Art News today for this conversation. I hope it's the first of many. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a great week. All right. Bye. Thanks, Antoine. Bye.